Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. We're getting ever closer to that 100th episode where I promised to do something a little special. Uh, I think the last video I said I thought that video was number 96, when in fact I believe this is now video number 96. But whatever the case, we're still getting much closer. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned to everybody or not, I had an incredibly uh, uh, exciting thing happen to me. I was hired by the Witte Museum in San Antonio, Texas as their guest curator of paleontology. It is an incredible honor and one of my main jobs is to help them design the new dinosaur wing that will be added to the Witte Museum. So I actually have the opportunity to be there at the ground level to help design this thing and it is incredibly excited and I am uh, honored beyond belief. So if you come to San Antonio, come to the Witte Museum and look for me, ask for me, and hopefully I'll be there and I'll give you a little tour around the museum. All right, let's get into it. Hudson from Ozona, Texas says, how are dinosaur bones put together? Well, Hudson, uh, put together, uh, I'm guessing you probably mean the skeletons are assembled, but let me answer two questions for you. One, uh, the way the bones are put together individually is very similar to the way a uh, puzzle's put together. When you find dinosaur bones, it's very rare to find those bones uh, complete. They're usually broken into pieces, and so each individual piece of that broken bone has to be put together in order to make the bone complete. Once that's done with every single individual bone, then those bones are then assembled the way the skeleton was put together. And we look at modern animals to help us understand how the skeleton of a prehistoric animal goes together. So at first it's like a big jigsaw puzzle, and then it's like a giant anatomy puzzle where you put the bones back in the place. Uh, it is an incredibly time-consuming job. That's why it takes, seems forever, for a dinosaur from the day it's discovered to the day it makes its way into a museum. It seems like that takes forever. That's because of the sheer volume of work involved in that. All right, uh, Henrik from Brisbane, Australia. He said, hey, DG, how are you? Henrik, I'm doing good. Nice to hear from you, buddy. Said, I've been watching your show now since about three episodes. He's talking about Jurassic Fight Club. And I have... Uh I have yet to think of a good question to ask, but I think I finally have a good one for you. <laughs> That's good, Henrik. He said, I'm very interested in marine biology and paleontology, and I've been reading a lot about animal behavior recently. I read that both dolphins and poor beagle sharks have created their own toys or games, and they've been seen playing with each other in their social groups. Uh, not the shark and the, and the dolphin. He's not talking about those animals playing together. He's talking about dolphins playing with members of their own family and the sharks playing with the members of their own family. Uh, Henrik asks, I was wondering if you think that some dinosaurs would have displayed similar behavior in their family groups. Thanks a lot for your time. I love your show, and I hope I will be around for a long time to come. I hope it will be around for a long time to come. Have a great day. Henrik, I'm glad you liked the show, and thank you very much. Um, um, and I hope you have a great day as well. You know, looking at mammal behavior, uh, we see a lot of mammals have social games that they play. A lot of those games really are not necessarily played because they want to simply have fun. A lot of it has to do with the fact that that helps to hone their survival skills. Uh, it teaches them agility. It teaches them the ability to chase and catch prey. So I do believe that dinosaurs would have had those same kind of games. Now, perhaps toys may have been too advanced for their brains. Maybe they weren't picking up things and, and playing with them the way, say, dolphins are. Now, sharks' brains are not unbelievably advanced, yet these poor beagle sharks are doing it as well. So uh, maybe I'm underestimating dinosaurs. Maybe they did have those same uh, ability to create their own toys and, and use them to play games. It would not surprise me. Certainly looking at modern animals gives us some insight into prehistoric animals. And I do believe that some of the behaviors we see around us today would have been shared by dinosaurs. All right, Keenan from Calgary. Uh, Calgary, Canada. Was Allosaurus the apex predator or was it Torvosaurus? You know, Keenan, that's a tough one because Torvosaurus is rare compared to Allosaurus. And because we find so much evidence of Allosaurus, it lends itself to believe then that Allosaurus would have been the more successful dinosaur and therefore would have been the apex predator. If you find more of them, it suggests they were more successful. Now, that's not necessarily the fact because Torvosaurus may have been a dinosaur that just didn't like to hang out in the areas where it was more likely that you were going to become fossilized. Sometimes we find few animals, like Tyrannosaurus rex is an example. We don't find a lot of them. And so the first concept would be, wow, there weren't many of them. But it could simply be 
that we're not finding many of them because those dinosaurs did not prefer environments where it was more likely you were going to be buried in mud and therefore uh, preserved and fossilized. So my best guess based on the evidence is Allosaurus would have been the apex predator and Torvosaurus would have been uh, the minor predator, to the best of my knowledge. All right, Mackenzie from St. John's, Canada. Do you think that Oviraptor had a competition for food with Velociraptor? Well, yeah, Mackenzie, they lived at the same time in the same place. They're both predators and therefore they did compete. But because they're built so dramatically different, my best guess is that they divided up the food sources. They may not have competed head on for every single thing that they hunted. Um, Velociraptor, certainly in my opinion, had much more dangerous weapons than Oviraptor. I don't think Oviraptor would have stood much of a chance in a battle with them. So I think Oviraptors would have uh, kind of kept their distance from Velociraptors. Think of it the way you think of hyenas and jackals. Jackals are fast little guys that rush in and grab a bite when they can, but they stay out of the way of the hyenas. I think that's what you would have seen between Velociraptor and Oviraptor. Okay, finally, Taylor from McKesney Park, Illinois. Is there going to be a second season of Jurassic Fight Club? Unfortunately, Taylor, no, there's not. And Taylor also says, and why weren't the Dromaeosauruses and baby Tyrannosauruses covered in feathers in that show? Good question, Taylor. The reason why they were not it has simply to do with uh, budget, dollars. It costs a tremendous amount of money to animate feathers, to put feathers on a dinosaur and to animate them. Every individual feather has to be animated individually. They all have to move individually. Well, that equals a tremendous amount of time that the animators would have spent simply putting feathers on something. The other reason why is because at the time the show was filmed, they were finding feathered dinosaurs, but most of them were very, very tiny. There was not any real, in my opinion, definitive proof that big raptors like Dromaeosaurus and Velociraptor would have had feathers. Now, since that time, there have been more discoveries, and it looks almost certainly that they would have all had feathers. Uh, but at the time, there wasn't enough evidence to really justify doing it in great detail. We added a couple of feathers to the arms of the Dromaeosaurus, I think, in the second to the last episode. But unfortunately, cost was a factor. Budgets run the world, my friend, and we just didn't have the money to put feathers on everybody the way I wish we could have. All right, you guys, remember, the 100th episode is coming up soon. It'll be special. Don't expect anything spectacular. Uh, I've got budgets I have to live by. <laughs> but uh, while, uh, if you've got questions and you'd like to ask me something, go to my website at dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. Fill out the form. Remember, we receive now in excess of a thousand questions every single week. It is absolutely impossible for me to answer them all. So for those of you that um, send me emails individually asking me to please answer them. Keep in mind, I also get thousands of emails from all different sources and I just do not have the time to answer them all. So uh, I'll try my best. Until next time, everybody, take care of yourselves. Take care of the people around you. For you young people, make sure to practice your reading. And for everybody, always use good manners. And I will see you guys soon. Take care.